Here are the JSIs. There's one new one somewhere in here. Yeah, Ryan. We haven't. If if you um, I haven't divvied up the sections yet. Um, if you want to stay, I, I mean, I, I do this kind of randomly. They, I just go through and put the numbers, and everybody gets the, sorted. If you want, having, having had one GSI last time, if you want to stay with that one for some reason or change to a different one for some reason, email me um, with your preference, either not this guy or definitely that guy. I mean, however it goes. And I will try to, try to uh, remember to do that. Because I'll, I'll set that up probably this afternoon, among other things. All right, this is what you just got. Mm, yeah, you know how this course runs more or less, right? Lectures Monday, Friday, usually. Wednesday, uh, typically, will be in the recitation section. So next, next Wednesday, you'll be in the sections already. Uh, same as last semester with the, the web problems. How many people weren't in here last semester? Am I talking to anybody? Three people. OK, right. All right. You three people, um, you're going to have to get a clue. <laughs> it's not very difficult, but there's a website that's down here at the bottom of the, the page. And right now, I haven't got all of the uh, logins set up. So uh, maybe I'll do that. To, that's another thought on the to-do list. And uh, by this afternoon, maybe I'll send out an email when it's ready. But I'll, uh, when you go to that website, you go to a section that says problems, and, and there are problems there that you work, which you'll probably figure out. If you can't figure it out, ask somebody. And you know, it's not very difficult. OK, there, we're, we're going to do three exams. I've tweaked this slightly from last semester, but not very much. Three, three tests, just like last, last term. The problem's pretty much like last term, except there are more of them, because uh, I know they're so much fun. And the project is, we'll also do a little build thing. Instead of the bridge, we'll go vertically uh, with a tower. Uh, there's a, yeah, same, same, same textbook as last time. There will be a course pack, but I haven't, don't go asking them for it. They'll, they'll not be happy if 160 people come in every 10 minutes and say, is the course pack ready? No, it's not ready, because I haven't, I haven't taken it up there yet. So I will send an email, and you will know when it's ready. It'll be soon. And there's the website. OK, what else we got here? This schedule. OK, that's a handy thing. See, I give you a copy. It's also, it's also online. It's also in your course pack. So you can pin this one on your refrigerator or on your, above your bed. So every, every night before you go to bed, you can look at it and say, yep, that's what I got to do tomorrow. Uh, keep up to date on things. These are all the problems. Look at that. Um, yeah, see, we got three days to do wood. So there's no panic. Um, this semester, some. Uh, uh, somebody from something, I forget their name. Hmm. What was his name? Anyway, this guy <laughs> contacted me from nowhere with a, a request about something. And the result is that they're going to take all the, since we more or less have this course online anyway, and UM wants to start putting all their courses online, they're going to take this course and put it on another site. I mean, we'll still have our site. I'm not going to give up my site. But there'll be another site for like people in South Africa or wherever are going to use for whatever I know. And um, so what? Um, yeah. Anyway, I don't, I don't know if that's of any interest at all. Probably not. Uh, right. The homeworks are the same as last time. Test, we call it. Says, oh, yeah, and the tower. And uh, the tower, we, actually, I think the tower is a is a more interesting problem than the bridge. There's certainly a higher, higher uh, risk of, of smashing your toes or something with a tower. It's, it's really a little bit more dangerous and, and definitely more exciting. You, the idea is to build a tower as high as you can to hold as much weight as possible. So you end up with these towers about six feet high with 150 pounds on them. And when they break, it's dazzling. I mean, if you thought the bridge was cool, the, the tower is certainly. Anyway, OK, so I'll do that. <clears throat> and all right, that's, <laughs> that's all for the introduction. And now, now chapter 11, wood. This semester, last semester, last semester was, what did you learn? Did you learn anything last semester? Let's hope so. 
you three people that weren't here, these people learned a lot. They learned, what did you learn? Vector mechanics, right? Vector mechanics, yeah, that how all the little arrows, which way's up and down, force follows the arrow. Uh, what else did you learn? Statics, statics. We didn't learn anything about dynamics, I don't think, that I remember. Uh, but statics, summation of forces, add up to zero. That's statics, right? Summation of vertical forces add up to zero. Summation of horizontal forces add up to zero. Summation of moments add up to zero. These are simple equations, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, but you learned it. Well, and what else did we learn last? <laughs> statics. Basic mechanics. Basic mechanics. We learned, and strength of materials. There, I knew there was something else. Strength of materials. There's, oh, the two important stress equations we learned. Actually, we learned three. The basic stress equation, hey, maybe we should write these on the board. It just occurred to me. This is important. <laughs> the stress equations, you learn this. This you better remember. Um, basic stress. P over A, right? That one. P over A. You should, if you didn't learn that, you are in big trouble. I don't know how you pass the course. I think, I think we should have some sort of a final, like a, you know, you pass all the exams, you pass all the tests, but if you don't know this, we say, I'm sorry, you have to repeat the whole course. <laughs> you gotta know this. This is very important. P over A. Next important one. This is this is axial or bearing or those. Uh, the next one which is uh, the Fletcher equation, mc over i. You remember that one? mc over i, sometimes also written as uh, m over s. m over s, which is, it just shortens it a little bit more convenient for design, as you'll see. And we learned one more right at the end. Well, that very last chapter we hit, right? Must have been chapter 10. Uh, VQ over IB. These, these, you should write those down. Everybody write these down? Write this down. Got it. Good. Memorize it. I mean, there's not much in life that you really have to memorize anymore. You memorize maybe, what do you memorize? A few lyrics to some songs. You memorize your address, your phone number. This. You've got to memorize this. I'm sorry. It's just something that should, you know, when P over A, you know, it's just got to come right, right from the heart. It should be embedded into your soul. MC over I. When you draw, it, <laughs> no, okay. So, um, and <laughs> today we will probably do this. We'll look at this one a little bit for Fletcher. This is this is the wood code. This is what it looks like in real life. You could get yourself one. They're a little bit expensive, but they're cheaper for students. This has, and, and wood is something that architects could very likely design. You know, as an architect, you are qualified to do some structures. I mean, you probably wouldn't go out and design a steel multi-story building, but I think up to three stories, and certainly with wood, this is sort of your, your range. If, you know, if your father-in-law asks you to design a wood deck, it would be really embarrassing to say, Huh? <laughs> what? But I have like, no clue. Go ask the guy at the lumber yard. No, you should have a copy of this, and this would help you immensely. There are a lot of out in, in our textbook. It, it gives a basic procedure, uh, but the real numbers are in here. The real numbers meaning the actual wood stresses. In in um, in Engel, he gives you all the the uh, the basic um, principles. But he doesn't, it, when it comes to uh, the, the allowable in, in um, ASD, right? This is allowable stress design. The premise here is one of these Fs, you know, these, these guys here, the little f, has got to be less than or equal to a big F. And the big F, the big F is the allowable, right? And this one is the actual. 
So the actual comes from the, the stress equations, and the allowable, the allowable comes from a lot of testing. It's particularly with wood. With wood, and this is this is let me tell you my favorite, very favorite piece of wood. Anybody, anybody recognize this? You recognize this? What is it? I don't. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what do you think it is? Not southern pine. I used to. I, huh? No, no, it's not cedar. Cedar's a little grayer. Aluminum. <laughs> Wait, guy. Write his name now. Can you zoom in on the back of his head? Get the guy out of here. This is Douglas fir. Douglas fir. Not the state tree, at least not for here. I think, what's our state tree? White pine. White pine. Um, that's, a nice, that's a nice wood, too, but it's a little bit sappy, actually. Um, Douglas fir is a nice piece of wood. It's got such a warm kind of color. It's strong. It's stronger in Michigan, by the way, than in other states. We grow strong trees here due to the uh, cold winters. Hmm. Yeah, and this one's not a bad piece either. Well, <laughs> what was I going to say about this? <laughs> this, has a certain, this has a certain stress capacity, I mean, a, an allowable value. And it depends. I mean, it's different for southern pine. I mean, southern pine actually is a little bit harder, and it's a little bit stronger. I don't like to admit that, but um, spruce is probably a little bit weaker. It's a little bit softer. Um, the uh, basswood is definitely uh, a, a softer wood. You know, the different, different woods, as you could get, you know, oak. Oak is really hard and stiff. It has a different emodulus. It also has a little bit higher uh, stress capacity. And they also have different stress capacities and different types of stress. In, in axial stress here, if I load it like this, it's going to have one kind of, of behavior. If I load it in, in, in flexure this way, then it's going to behave, you know, the stress capacity, the allowable stress is a little bit different. Uh, if I load it in shear, you know, where it's, you know, shearing like this, uh, splitting the grain, it's actually kind of weak. Uh, in tension. So all those different, in wood, unlike some other materials, steel's not like this. Steel's pretty homogeneous. Steel, you know, you turn it like this, you turn it like that. You know, which way's up with steel? Mm, yeah, a little bit. There is a, 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 a crystal structure, crystalline structure, but it's pretty much the same however you turn it. Uh, not true with wood. Wood is organic. Wood is a, um, a real interesting material. And, and for that reason, uh, the allowable values are, are obtained by testing. Uh, the wood lab through the years, I think there's a place in Minnesota, uh, they'd gather up lots and lots of samples and they'd test lots of pieces. They'd just break one after some guy's got a job, you know, it's just one after another. Put it in, break it, write down the number. Next one, put it in, break it, write down the number. You know, this is what he did for like 30 years and then he retired. But he learned a lot, I guess. And he also wrote down all the values, and they put them in this book. So now you don't have to break each one. You just go, you go here. You look up the value. Look up the value. You got to have your glasses on to this. Little numbers. What do we got here? Alaska cedar. Well, gosh, come on. Who uses that? Balsa fir. They're alphabetical. Stick a spruce. Uh, Douglas fir. There. Douglas fir. And then there are different grades, of course. This is probably select. I think that one's select. Oh, maybe it's even dense select. It is pretty dense. Uh, and then they have different values in bending, in tension. So it's a table. And you'd pull the value out of that table to get, to get uh, this value right here. Now, hey, how did I get up there? This isn't the, this isn't the picture I wanted. Is somebody moving this on me? Um, that this is the value that's in the table, this FB, that F. For wood, uh, besides the, the species and the, the um, a type of stress uh, impacting the, the, the capacity, the other thing that affects it is, is how the conditions of use, uh, the conditions under which it's used. If you use it under water, say, Hmm, it's going to be wet. 
and wet wood does not perform the same as uh, dry wood. You know, people go through a lot of trouble, kiln dry a piece of wood, and it, it gains in strength, actually. If you get it soggy, uh, the water, I think, actually acts a little bit as a lubricant between the fibers, and it, and it weakens. They can, they can, and the wood, I mean, you know this anyway, intuitively, right? Wood, you saw, you get s organic stuff. If you get it wet, it softens. You can then bend it, maybe, if it's wet, uh, it's because it softens a little bit. It's, uh, so that would be one moisture. Uh, in wood, also another factor, a big factor, is, is how long you load it. Wood is, is able to carry, because of the way it fails, it's fibrous and it fails fiber by fiber. So if you load it really quickly, only a few fibers fail and you can get on and off of it before, before anything really happens. If you put the same load on it for a long duration, it slowly, fiber by fiber, I mean, you've heard this, right? <laughs> right? Does that sound familiar? Maybe, you know, if you're in the top bunk of a bed, you know, and you're... And then and all of a sudden it goes... Well, it's, it's breaking fiber by fiber, and the long... I mean, if you got off, you might live. But if you sit up there, you know, just daydreaming, listening to these fibers fail, eventually it'll get to the last fiber, and you've had it. So, so the duration makes a difference. Uh, these are these are kind of from the code some of the durations and typical factors. They, these all of these uh, are the usage factors are applied uh, by way of a factor that's like on a scale of one or you know well around one. It's a modification. You can think of it as a percentage, like uh, 1.0 would be 100 percent. So ten the the actual value is based on a 10 year load. So that would be normal. If, if I uh, load it for less time, two months, like a snow load, then I can increase the capacity 15%. If I uh, load it for only a week, like a construction load, you've got to get your house built, in, or at least the roof, or whatever, the wood, uh, in um, seven days. And then 10 minutes would be an earthquake or wind. That'd be Kind of long for wind, really, earthquake. Well, anyway, impact would be very short. Anyway, so the 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 length of the load ha is a factor. Other factors, uh, there's something about the stability that has to do with uh, its likelihood to uh, flip over or in a very deep beam to to become wobbly. Uh, so that has to do with the proportions, a size factor. That uh, next one down has to do with the, just the volume of the wood. The more volume, statistically, the more likely you are to have a defect in that, in that volume. So there's, that, that's accounted for. You think, wow, that's a, that's a kind of a fine, who'd worry about that? Well, if you go and design these things, you might worry about that. Flat use, this is flat, this is not flat. So that, that makes a difference in the capacity, all, mainly because of the, the stability. but but that and repetitive factors since a lot of wood members are used like joists close together if they're within two feet of each other and one's a little bit weaker than the ones on either side can pick up the load so there's a you can take that into account a little bit so all these all these things are the sort of these are the this is a list of factors you'd run through and and uh, apply to the basic tabulated value, the ba va value you got out of the table, you multiply it all together, and that gives you then this value. This value is then what you compare to the uh, allowable there, or the actual. Now, in, in uh, what we do in here, since you, don't have, since you don't have a copy of the code, we can't really go through all this. So the values that that you're going to be given are already, they've already got all the factors on them, we'll assume. Everything that, that you know, Engel uh, gives you is just, he'll give you the, this value, the allowable. In fact, he doesn't put a prime or anything on it. I think he just calls it F, if I remember right. But this is, this will give you, I mean, just so you have a sense, you know, so you're not a, a babe, right? You know you've got some sort of understanding of what really is involved in this. 
Uh, now the other the other end of it, the other end of it is just the uh, the equations that we're familiar with. So this is this is the part you'd get out of the code. This is the the uh, uh, part that we did last semester, mc over i or m over s. Uh, s would be, uh, and for a rectangular section, s is just a simple equation, right? You can plug these numbers in to get s. But this is also tabulate. I mean, you know, there are only so many wood sizes, and you just look it up in a table. Even our book, if you look in the appendix, has got a table for that. Um, and this is a, uh, then the comparison here, like that. Uh, for for shear, uh, these are the two main stresses, flexure and shear. Usually, uh, flexure controls the design. Usually, flexure is the, the dominant one. Uh, sometimes, if you have a real long and, and slender beam, deflection might control. Not, not really flexure stretch, but it's, it's flexing. Uh, I mean, it's deflecting could control. If you have a very short beam that, that you know, the shorter you get um, WL squared, right, over 8, that L is that sh L gets shorter, your um, moment decreases by the square. So, so um, on very short beams, flexure doesn't control, but shear very likely would. So a, a heavily loaded short, uh, maybe like about this length, 6 feet long, that, that, could be a, that could be a shear problem, particularly with wood. Uh, because wood is weaker in shear. This, this value is less for... In, it's the same procedure. You get a value out of the table. You apply, in this case, m far fewer factors, just the, the moisture factor and the, the load duration factor. Um, and then the equation you can compare it to is the one we looked at at the end of last semester, VQ over IB. For wood, again, it's because it's a nice little rectangle, that's a lot, this reduces down to 1.5 VA, V over A, right? So that's just, that's just a reduction. You could plug in all the Bs and Ds in these numbers, and it, it reduces to this. Um, and then you compare it. So, piece of cake. Simple procedure. Um, this, is, this is the uh, table that's in the back of, of our book. And it's also, I mean, it's a, you can find these tables all over the place. Isn't it? It's in here, too, of course, naturally. In fact, in, in a more complete table would be in here. They also give you, um, like, densities, weight per foot of the different size woods, which might be handy if you're figuring dead load, that kind of thing. Uh, but this is, this is about the information you need. Uh, you notice a 2 by 4 you probably already know this, is not really two inches by four. This is the uh, the full full rough cut dimension uh, that they cut it is two by four. And then when it when it dries, it shrinks a little bit. So then it's it's a little bit smaller. And then when they they finish it, they you know they they don't you don't want some nasty piece of wood. You want something that's a little bit more civilized. You don't got rounded edges, so you can hold it without getting splinters all over your hands. Um, and it's a more, m most important, it's a uniform size, you know, uh, after it's through the shrinkage, it's not really uniform. You know, you cut it exactly at two by four, then it doesn't all shrink exactly the same. So to get it back to a uniform dimension that you could use more uh, precisely in, in construction, it has to, be, has to be dressed, and this is dressed four sides, uh, on all four sides, and that reduces it. So in the end, what you end up with is something like this. This is the actual size, one and a half by three and a half. So these are the actual dimensions. And of course, all of the the area, the the moment of inertia, the um, uh, section modulus. These are all based on the actual dimensions. I mean, it would be be fictitious to base it on two by four. I mean, you wouldn't say, oh, what's the area? Eight inches, eight square inches. No, it's not. Not even close. It's five point two five square inches, right? Uh, so you have to pay attention to that. Um, so, and, but you have a table like this, you can get these values. Don't really have to calculate them out so much. Uh, the analysis procedure, you remember the difference we talked last, did we talk last semester about analysis and design? I can't remember. Did we do any analysis and design? Oh, maybe we didn't. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, yes? No, look. It was. Vision. Well, uh, we do much more. Last semester, yeah, I never did finish that idea that last semester was all basic mechanics, static, strength of materials. This semester is actually analysis and design of, of members. Wood today, uh, steel, concrete, and then things like uh, bending, buckling, uh, a little more topics that relate to actually sizing uh, members. So you have at least a sense of how to pick the size of members. Uh, picking the size of a member is design. That I mean, you know, design, you know that. Design, you start with a notion. <laughs> start with a concept. And you've got to find a size, right? You've got to create, you've got to create substance design, right, out of an idea. Well, analysis is the other way around. Analysis, you've already got the physical object. It's there. It's already designed. It's there. And you want to an analyze it. You want to see probably whether it's strong enough. So in analysis, that's why I underlined it up there the other night, member size. Above all, you've got member size. If you're going to analyze it, you already know how big it is. There's no question. You're not designing it to find out how big it is. You, you already know how big it is. So this makes analysis a little bit easier problem. Uh, because it is, you'll see when you do design, um, there are always more options. If you've got to pick the size yourself, then it can be a little bit more complex. But if the size is already in existence, and this may be actually a realistic problem that you'd have. You know, you, you know you, you've got an existing structure, and you want to uh, uh, put your bookshelf in there with like 300 pounds of books, and you're wondering whether the floor can really hold it up. And, you know, maybe you do a quick little analysis and decide that... Uh, you should put it over against the wall and not in the middle of the floor or something. Uh, so you probably are given in analysis the loading, uh, definitely the member size, the material, and the conditions like span, uh, something like that. Those would be uh, your supplied values. What you're looking for is whether it's safe or unsafe, pass or fail. Um, uh, procedure, okay, you start by finding the shear and moment. So all that we did last semester, remember that? Shear and moment diagrams, ah, it was useful. Because that's, that's the information you've got to have. You've got to plug that in. The first thing you've got to know is what the loads are in terms of uh, first the forces, shear and moment. Uh, then you've got to determine the stresses based on these. So you take the moment and plug it in there and find the the flexure stress, you take the, and here you have to have, this is coming from the member size, right? Uh, then for shear, you've got the shear force, right, wherever that is, and you plug it in there, and this is coming from the member size. So you, to get the stress, you have to have a member. Uh, once you have the stress, then you want to look at what the allowable stress is. This is from uh, Engel, it's just going to be given or you determine it, like we just talked about, from the code book. You have to find that, what the allowable is for your particular variety of wood and whatnot. And then you just compare the two. Hmm? So, piece of cake, right? This is pretty simple, actually. Uh, here's an example. <clears throat> and this, this should be, this is it. I was looking at these numbers trying to remember, what the heck was this? Why, why was this stupid load and this stupid? And, and I remembered, finally, where this problem came from, um, I must have done it last year. Get that out of the way. It's this. This happens to be six feet long. And that is six feet long. And I had it, I had it um, set up here as a, as a call. So here, here is a beam. Here's a beam. Mm. Mm. Maybe that's not a very good idea. Here's a beam. Okay, there's a beam. And guess what? Well, okay, maybe not since I've been eating so many cookies, but at one time I used to weigh 145 pounds. And if I stand in the middle here, the question is, whether will the beam support me? Well, intuitively you'd say, come on, it's Douglas fir. <laughs> this has got, it's got to support him, except that it's an extremely wobbly, and <clears throat> I think it would, well, it did for about a half a second there. All right, but you, wanna, you don't want to just kind of 
always have to test things out. You want to be able to calculate it, right? So, um, hmm, how much time do I have to calculate this? Should I write this on the board? No, I'm not going to write it on the board. Let's just look at it. <laughs> We're around a little shorter time. OK, so it looks something like this. OK, so there's me, the P. Here's P for Peter. Wow, it is for me. And, and here's a six-foot beam, right? And the first thing we want to do, this is where you start. You've got to find the forces. This is the applied force. The end reactions, if I, if I stand right in the middle, this is going to split. So half of 145 is 72 and a half. So there's 72 and a half for the end reactions, right? That means the shear diagram is going to go from 72 and a half to 3 feet and down. So there's 72 and a half times 3 feet is, I guess, that look like 3 times 72. Yeah, it must be 20, 21. 217.5. So that's the area of that. This is 3 feet. So 3 times 72.5. That, then that area equals this value, right? That's then from 0, the change from here to here is that area. So that's 70, <laughs> that is 217.5. And it has the dimensions that we got from up here, right? This is pounds times feet, foot pounds, right? That's where, those, that's where it comes in. And you've got to pay attention whether it's foot pounds or foot inches. Or, no, foot inches. <laughs> Inch pounds or kip feet or whatever. And it, it has the dimensions of what you put in up here. This is pounds, pounds times feet. If I say three feet, then that is foot pounds. Foot pounds is moment, right? Foot pounds, if you, I was just putting on my lug, I just got snow tires and had to put on the, the tighten the lug nuts up, and they were 55 foot pounds, I think. <laughs> anyway, so you, you got to make sure they're the right, right quantity. If foot pounds is definitely a, a twisting moment or torque. All right, so those are the two, let's see, those are the moment. You could also get them through equations, right? There is this period. P over 2 would be the max shear, uh, shear force, the max moment, PL over 4, which is probably what this is here. So that, ah, here we, here we have a conversion. 217.5 times 12, no doubt, is uh, 2,610. Now that's in inch pounds. And I'd convert it to inch pounds because I've got to compare it eventually to this value. And this is given. This came out of the, this is for Douglas Fir, no doubt. Oh, yeah, that's a high value, actually. Um, actually, I just looked at it. It was 19. So that's a little, it's had some factors put on it. So that's F prime B. That's for select structural Douglas Fir, 1,800. And somebody left the, there. It should be PSI, PSI. So because that's in inches, and I'm going to compare it to that, I've got to get I've got to get this one in inches. So I've got to get this one in inches. So that's why this had to be converted to inches. So that's in inches. This just remains, this is force. This is just in pounds. So that'll match the pounds. With wood, you're usually in the range of pounds, as opposed to steel that you might be looking at KSI, kips. This is wood is, wood is, is pounds. OK, so now we're going to do these. We're going to find the stresses, m over s. M over S, that S, where did that come from? This is a 2 by 4, 3.06, right? Or it would have been, there was some formula for that too. Probably did it on the formula here. Yeah, or this, BD squared over 6, 3 point, whoa, 063. There you go. Multiply, divide that, uh, divide the, the uh, moment here in inches. This is in inches, and you'll come out with PSI, pounds per square inch. One inch here cancels one inch there, so that's per square inch it's in. 800, 852, that's the actual. When I stand on this, 852. Where, is, where the heck is 852? Well, that's the stress on these fibers, the outer fibers, right? These guys here, the guys at the bottom right in the middle, are being stressed that high. Right where the moment, where we're taking the moment. And, and fortunately, it has a capacity of uh, 1,800. 
So 852 is way less than 1,800, no problem. I mean, I can, Matthew and I together could stand on this. You want to try? No. All right. Shear, whoop. <laughs> Shear, 3 halves V over A. 1.5 times, there's the V divided by the A, 20.7. It has a capacity of 180, so even in shear. Now, shear, that, because of the, that shear value, was all along here, right? Anywhere along there. Uh, so that would be, it could, in this case, with a point load, I mean, the, the value's the same, but it's uh, VQ over IB is at a maximum on the, at the neutral axis, remember? So we're looking, the stress we're talking about is a, is a horizontal shear stress right along here somewhere. Usually, if you have a distributed load, the maximum is at, at, at the reactions. It's a rare case in a simple span beam that, that it, the maximum is not the reaction. You'd have to have some strange loading to, to get a higher shear stress somewhere else. You'd have to have up and down loadings, I think. And, but as long as it's just a normal gravity loaded simple span beam, the maximum shear is not going to be any higher than the reactions. One of them, whichever the higher reaction is. Uh, anyway, and in this case, that came out safe. So, so the conclusion is, it's a good beam. That'll carry. That'll carry. I mean, there's the analysis shows that I can stand on it with no problem. That would be, in fact, I could gain quite a bit of weight. I could probably, I could double my weight, right? I mean, if I doubled this, if I doubled the if I went back and doubled this number, then this number would double, right? And this number would then double, and that would bring it to 16, 17. So I could double my, Matthew and I could stand on it together. So, but, but if Matthew and I and Thomas stood on it, that would get pretty dicey, assuming we're all standing exactly in the middle. <laughs> all right, so there you go. You know a little bit about wood.